Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Jeremiah, and today on Hail Design Technologies, I'm going to be finishing up this. This is the Autocrafter, built from off-the-shelf parts, an extremely large, this thing is huge, 3D printer. I've been developing the Autocrafter for the last two months. I'm excited to say it's coming together quite well. Thank you for the positive feedback I've been receiving on my build series. So I haven't quite finished getting out all the content for the build on the build series yet. So let's back up a little bit to cover that, which is covering and finishing the X table, the water tank that sits on top of the X table, the plumbing that'll need to be uh, plumbed in to heat the water tank. It'll be a heated print bed by heating the water as well as the final calibration and wiring done for the Autocrafter. So let's get into it now. Yeah, it's hard to get this thing in the camera. These washers are technically too small for this. They're also stretchy, so, ha, I win. Why don't you screw down all the way? What's your problem? I don't see a problem, just probably needs some English. Okay, hold on, gotta get the pipe wrenches out. You're uh, in the way here, let me. It's incredibly tight. What is your problem? I don't know if you can see that on camera. You, know, you really can't. But there's some pressure on a couple of those threads in there, which tells me that these threads aren't made for each other. Oh, I have to get some new ones or figure out a way to make this work. Scratched up my metal. That's okay, it's in the back. Not the best fit in the world, but that should hold. So how am I solving my water heating issue? I'm just going to throw a simple under the sink water heater, on demand water heater under there. Picked it up off eBay for 50 bucks. When cold water flows in, it senses that there's water flow, turns on the heating elements, warms up the water, spits it back out. So all I need to do is have some sort of water pump and this thing will handle all the heating for me and turning off the heating elements, all that fun stuff. All I need to do is have a little pump primed into the system and I can control the temperature of the water just by how much water I pump through this thing. Pretty cool. I don't know if you can see this. So it's got, it's got a thermal shut off at 90 C. Um, so that's somewhere around a little, that's a little over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm never gonna, really gonna go that hot with the water anyway. So this should be perfect. That's my solution. Um, you, could, you could pull a heating element from a water heater. That would also work, but there'd be a nice hot spot wherever you put your heating element. This hopefully should be somewhat uniform temperature of the water. That's why I'm going with this system. And if this whole plan doesn't work at all, I may be able to just repurpose this thing and use it in my house somewhere.
So I need to move. I got this installed, but then I realized I didn't read the manual, so I thought I should check. And sure enough, um, there's an orientation you gotta install this thing in, and you can't install it upside down. I was afraid of that, but glad I checked. So I can't mount it there. Okay, there we go. So I can't mount it there. I have to mount it um, with the spouts facing downwards so the gravity can turn the uh, gravity switch that detects the water feed on and off because they're too lazy to throw a spring in there or too cheap. Hopefully I can just switch the hoses on this side, but I think I might have to move my pump. Okay, just move the pump over about eight inches and that made all the hoses nice and happy. So I think I'm done with the plumbing. Next job is wiring. All right, she's wired in. Got it on a um, half circuit. So it's normally a three kilowatt heater. I got it running off one coil, so it's gonna be a 1500. 1.5 kilowatts that won't blow my electrical around here also got it on a uh, breaker plug those are always handy especially for power levels of this magnitude <laughs> All right guys, I got it wired in. This is so freaking cool. I've got the pump acting as the water um, bed heater coming off the printer's main board. So it thinks the pump is the heater heat source for the water. And so it just powers the pump. And then that pump kicks on the under sink instant water heater, which flows into the tank in the circle. It's a little louder than I would like, but I'm loving it so far. I think this is so awesome. I've been running it for about 10 minutes now and it's increased six degrees. So I, I didn't think it would change the water temperature overnight. Um, and I'm only running this bad boy on half circuit. My sign finally applies. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that. Now that's gonna be a big problem. Humidity is not very good for printer filament. So I have a plan to deal with this steam and I hope it works. Or my poor filament and print quality are gonna pay the price. Okay, she's pretty much flat lining now at around 43 degrees C. It's around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll, uh, if I want it hotter than that, I'm gonna have to kick in the other coil. I love the smell of fresh cut steel in the morning. This is the same thickness as 16 gauge 060 wall. Uh, one inch by one inch square tubing. Um, it comes with a layer of petroleum jelly that you probably want to wipe down or that um, nasty black stuff gets on everything. It comes from the factory ship that way. These are my new favorite building material. Uh, it's, it's like my new two by four. So all of this metal here, this is 40 foot of one inch tubing. I got it for 30 bucks. So. Um, even with some steel tariffs uh, getting tacked on there. What are these? These are the burning bars to go inside the waterbed. Um, make a square bottom um, stabilizer so I can raise or lower each corner to make it even plane. And the rest of them is to be cut at, at uh, equal lengths and set directly on top. And they're going to be wasted bars, um, otherwise known as burning bars. So if a plasma cutter comes along, it's going to slice right through these. Um, and uh, it's just sort of the expense you have with the plasma cutter. Uh, these are going to rust like no other, um, so don't hold that against me when you see pictures later of the water tank and it uh, having these lovely brown bars in the middle of it. They're going to get cycled through anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. And this whole set costs 30 bucks.
So now I just gotta run a weld around here and then I'll drill and tap this corner right here for a set screw so I can adjust the height of each corner inside the tank. And so this will sit near the bottom of the tank and the other burning bars will sit right on top of it. This might be kind of bright. Since there's a bit of a gap, I'm gonna lay the filler rod in the gap as I light up on it. That way it starts a nice, good, full gapped puddle. My theory is, if there's a gap, fill it with extra metal. So I do sort of an overbead. So it always, when you weld, it always pulls the direction that you weld. So it wants to bow out at this point. So on the other side, I gotta weld the opposite direction. I'm gonna come and do that corner. But uh, that should be enough to get me started. Down this side, up on the inside. Inside corner. Put my hood in here. I love these magic squares from Fireball Tool. It makes putting together a job like this way easier. I actually picked myself up a set of these because if I had just one, it would get lonely. And, they're, and then they're adjustable. And if you don't like the adjustable kind, then I think uh, Fireball Tool has a bunch of other smaller and larger squares um, that are sort of the same heavy duty iron or aluminum. Um, the reason why you want iron is if you're going to do MIG welding, the splatter just gets, you can just brush it right off iron. So I can't say enough about them. Absolutely digging them. Made welding up this little square super easy. And I got these from Fireball Tool. Look them up on YouTube and their website. That'll do. Well, this is what we do with bolts that don't turn. There. Huh. So here are the burning bars. I only have four of them right now because I I thought I had some spare one inch lying around, but I can't find it. So this is all I bought of the new stuff. And it um, looks like I have to go buy some more. Here is the print bed. Hold on one second. A giant sheet. I am loving the way this looks. Hi, how are you? Want to say hi to the people? Huh? Say hi? Over here? The camera? No? You little camera shy? Okay. Give me love -ins. Thank you. I'm done. So this is the print bed. Uh, right here is a 4 by 4 by one eighth inch sheet. 4 feet by 4 feet. one eighth inch sheet of polypropylene. And the reason I'm going with polypropylene is it's got a very high temperature resistance. Uh, if you print on polypropylene, um, once the surface is, is prepped, then the print will adhere to it quite well and then pop off. Once you're done, all you need to do is flex the, the bed here. So this is what the uh, this is what the printer normally looks like when it's got the hockey rink on it. And then I can pull the uh, bed off if I want to do plasma cutting. And so that's the idea behind the water bed uh, for plasma cutting. And then I can usually just throw this lid back on it and switch over to a 3D printer. Pretty darn cool. I must say so myself. I uh, just gotta get the final wiring done for the printer itself and fill the bed up, get her heated up. Start doing some test prints. Right, Max? You can do some test prints. Yeah. 
I don't care what you see in the movies. This is what real R&D looks like. I am absolutely loving how this extruder and filament combo is working on the same axis. Filament here is literally held in by that C-clamp. You guys want to see what I got so far? Here, let me move you over there. Extruder feed test. And uh, squeeze in as hard as I can. Literally. And this thing is like pushing right through my fingers. Oh. There we go. I got it to trip. But I really got to squeeze that as hard as I can to get it to stop. All right. Um, just tighten down the extruder. Should be good now. Throw in a quarter there for perspective. Creating a 3D print already. <laughs> now it's going the other way. That's crazy. Smarter Every Day has a good uh, video on that phenomenon right there. Why it folds over. Why mine changes direction every time it stops. Oh, that is just so cool. How to waste a bunch of filament. So cool. The last couple of days have been plagued with a lot of electronics problems, getting signals to work, wiring, um, pretty boring stuff. So uh, just actually seeing this work is amazing. And that chewing you hear in the background is Max. Would you stop chewing on my zip ties? So technically, this is the very first print. Oh, it's got that E.T. face. Look at that. E.T. phone home. Okay, I've been up way too long. So I've been a busy bee and added a fan. Covers up that awesome looking extruder though. I hate it. I'm having clogging issues with the hot end. Watch the clog up really bad. Um, basically clogs up every time you run it. It's lacking cooling, so big old fan. Okay, this is getting expensive. New heater. Burn the old one out. I saw it happen too. It got too hot because my PID settings, power control settings for the heat up sequence, they're all stuffed up. So, yeah, my fault, but dang. Wish it didn't cost me a heater. Not like they're expensive, they're just a pain in the butt to change out. Okay. The dips in this waveform isn't my heart rate, it's the uh, me trying to dial in the temperatures here. And the idea is to get this line here at the top as clean as possible, and I think I got it. Let me bring you in a little bit closer, actually. Pardon the mess. But there we go. Oh, that's bright. Hold on. Focus. There we go. So. I think I finally got the settings dialed in. I was shooting for 200 and it looks like it's going to crank that out all day long. Okay, first print on the Autocrafter. Let's check it out. This is getting frustrating quickly. Okay, uh, I think I got my temperatures dialed in now, so take two or three. Lift five millimeters, heat up print head. That's what it's doing now, bringing it up to 205 Celsius. Yes, yeah, so this is definitely in pre alpha of testing. Right now, I'm just in printer calibration. And yes, that's a clamp holding the printer down. There we go. It's doing the perimeter, but it won't be printing anything for a minute because the 
nozzle still needs to be primed. That should actually be dumping fill right now, so that first layer is not going to be as good as I want. Darn. Might have to restart this layer, but we'll see. I was a chicken about putting... Oh gosh, that's terrible. There she goes. This is so cool though. That's actually printing for the first time ever on a giant 3D printer. Oh, that looks so cool. I love it. Oh my gosh. The print's not that great, but the fact that this thing is moving around and doing what I want, I'm in love. Now there's no water in here yet, so it's printed on a cold bed, so I'm not surprised if this thing will peel up on me. It looks so small compared to the printer. The print, I mean. Starting to move. Is this the end? It very well could be, folks. It very well could be. Yep. That's it. Here she is. Sorry, it's not, uh, it's not the whole big five foot print like I was hoping, but calibration is taking its toll on such a large piece of machinery. An echo in here. This is the main reason why you print calibration cubes to start off your 3D printer so you can diagnose the problems with your printer. Um, right now my Z layer height is spot on. So I love it. Uh, my extruder is spot on as well. My uh, X axis is pretty good. Except for that skew. I don't know if you can see the skew in there. So that means it's printing sideways. This represents such a monumental uh, leap forward uh, milestone in the project here. I got a long ways to go, but everything else is going to be adding on to the built platform um, and moving on forward from there. The purpose for building the Autocrafter is to kickstart my fabrication business. Small production runs, large production runs, doing a fabrication shop um, here in my garage. That's what my channel is about. Starting a fabrication shop from scratch without anybody teaching me, just learning as I go, um, picking up information as I go along, learning the new tactics that I need as I do them, and sharing my shenanigans with y'all. Um, 
So I'm starting Hail Design Technologies, and that will be my fabrication shop. I use uh, technologies as uh, I build in technological enhancements to the fabrication projects that I do. I hope you learned something along my build series here with, for the Autocrafter. I'll definitely be sharing more updates as I move along and the very first large print that I make. Check out all my specs and build guide on openbuilds.com. Uh, look for, uh, I think I'm calling it a five by five ultra large 3D printer build. Um, I need to rename that to a five by four because I actually uh, cut down a foot on it. Uh, why did I cut down a foot? Because it was hard to find print bed in a five by five um, print bed. So I went with a four by five instead. Thank you so much for um, your support in this build series. Absolutely love it. I've received nothing but positive feedback. Yeah, I'm not a professional. I'm learning this stuff as I do it. I'm With this build, I'm debuting the skills that I know. And moving forward, I'm gonna be learning everything I need to learn as I do it. And I'm gonna be making tons of mistakes. So uh, I'll love to know what you guys think, how I could improve, how I could do it better. Um, I read every one of my comments. And thanks around for sticking around at the end of the video. As a little treat, let me show you my next project. Yep, it's a bandsaw. And just like the Autocrafter, it's gonna be huge. So hit that subscribe button. Thanks, y'all.